All right, let's see what's going on with the Westie. I'm doing a little bit to this thing right now. I will be continuing on again with the other one, but I'm just doing these seats real quick. Just thought I'd show you guys this stuff. I mean, you know, I'm not doing the full professional, perfect looking seats. It kind of goes with the rest of this thing. It just wants to look nice. Looks like it's got new seats at least. I use a little bit different material. I like this texture on this one. I didn't see this one before. I saw this one after, so I decided, well, couldn't find the other one. We were over at the upholstery supply and we we're like, oh, where is that one? I kind of like this one. Let's go with it. So might not have to be the it'll have to be the same. Might put this in my camper van too. Alright, so that's where I'm at before I put any heat on it or anything that's just putting it on and beating it around. It's really hard to film that part. I couldn't. Putting it on, you squeeze this, the, uh, the springs and then pull it a little bit. Squeeze and pull it until it finally slides on. Don't use trash bags. <laughs> I've seen guys do that and they never get them out. You sit on it, it's all sounds on there's little. After a while, the, they start to get decrepit in there. and <laughs> It doesn't work that good. So... What I do is just get, get it hot. You just got to be careful if you put too much heat on here. Where I had problems is where, you know, where these things, there's so many layers right here in the corner. So let's see if I can straighten that out a little. And once I start to see the vinyl move just a little bit, I take the heat off. I have to be really careful with it. I can get this one out. It'll take about two shots. I'll get it out of there. It's just playing around with this stuff just for a while. Got something on my hands. a little bit it starts to form in there just got to get this corner a little better and what happened there it's just not quite oh, my patterns were good the sewing was pretty straight I don't know these fit a little bit better I think than the TMI ones I've gotten before some of them some of them are better than others Too much heat, you'll burn it, boy, you won't be happy. Gotta go just right and then stop. And wait, let it cool for a little bit, and then do it again. It takes a lot of patience to do these things. To do seats. If I can get that. I'll bring it back in and you can see, at least you know what we got. And then I'll see if I can get it to look better. And you'll find out. That it can be done if it can be done all right let's take a look still cooling down right now but that's ah, not terrible it looks all right i can sit in that let's look at the back uh, yeah i got a lot of the wrinkles out of here stitching's right on the edge versus some of the tmi it's way off but you know I mean, theirs look better, I guess. The, the really good ones do. The cheap ones, I don't know. They don't look as good as this. So, anyway, let's go put it in. Let's check it out. Well, I don't know. It doesn't look half bad. 
I gotta say it looks great, but it looks good. It looks, uh, you know, there's a couple loose ends here, like in this corner, I got a little holiday, the sewing or something happened there. I think I put too much stitching or something right there. It was really hard to do those corners. But, you know, in the, you're sitting in there, it's comfortable. That's the most important thing, right? You know, I think if you get everything, you know, everybody tries to shoot for 100% and gets mad if they do 90, you know, or 95. And then you never really finish anything. But if you do everything, if you're just shooting for 80% on everything, when you get all done, it looks really nice. So that's what I always do. I always shoot for 80%. I'm not looking for 100. I'm not looking for 90. I'm just looking for 80. If I shoot for 80, sometimes I overshoot it. Sometimes I get under. You know, but if everything's 80%, nice, then you win. I'm telling you, you, that's that's the key thing. You know, if you're trying to build a car, if you're not trying to build a show where you're trying to make everything perfect, I don't know, that just drives you nuts. I don't want to do that stuff anymore. This is fun. You know, when you do this and you, oh, well, I, tr I tried for 80 and I got 90, but not, that's not 90%, but I'm just saying some stuff is like that. All right, let's check it out what it looks like now. So now I got all the bumper bolts in. Let's hope that was the noise. I looked for the shock, it wasn't loose. Speedo's hooked up. I while I was under there, I ran the horn wire. So I got that run. I just gotta cut it, trim it, find the horn button. I don't know if I had one for this, I can't remember. I'm gonna take a look at that gas gauge and see if that can be fixed. Plus I wanna hook up this thing here, this throttle. Yeah, that's kinda cool. Got to put one of those in all my cars. That's neat. Picked up a few items from uh, Eddie and Dave's garage. He gets Wolfsburg West stuff, same price. You know, it just depends on what you're doing. Sometimes I pick up some used stuff and some new stuff from him. It's the same price as buying it from Wolfsburg. Sometimes it's easier right now because you got to order it and then go pick it up. And online, you have to order it online, then go pick it up. So sometimes it's just easier for me to just run through him. I got the door handle on here. Uh, got to do that side there, but I'm um, uh, so I picked up this thing, the rings. I'm gonna, but I'm missing the pin. Bummer. Might have one. I just gotta look around for it. Those little things I'm doing right now. I'm just kind of looking around, finding stuff, putting it on. Now, this has to be the coolest stuff ever, right here. enough rpm to go like 50 or 60 <laughs> you guys know what i'm thinking a long drive but you can also make it partial idle partial like that you can still use the gas pedal and it'll just stay at a higher idle gonna idle pull it up a little bit That is some cool stuff right there. I'll show you the engineering of it underneath real quick. So you got your uh, gas pedal right here, right? They have this, they put this rod right here. They welded it on this frame. You can see they're terrible little welds, but back then they didn't have the welding equipment we have now. There's an arc welder. And then they welded it to the bottom of the bracket right here. So it's this thing is all one piece. It's just folded over metal. It's drilled here. And then they drilled this part big and this part smaller. Okay. So that this is like a stop. This goes in there and kind of stops against that metal. All right. So you just take a flat metal and bend it. And then drill through this part, a big hole, and then drill a small hole through this portion. And then run your lawnmower cable up through here. And then... 
they put an eyelet. So normally this is just, just I think they actually maybe they extended this. I'm not sure. I have to look at the original ones. I don't think they did, but I think they just drilled through that. They put an eyelet there. So can you see the eyelet? So they put an eyelet there. And then so that this will just move. So as you step on your gas, this eyelet, this throttle is not restricted or anything. You can just run it up and down. But then there's this little set screw above it for the cable. So let's say you pull on the cable a little bit, right? You pull, and then it'll just make the idle faster. So it'll just pull this down and kind of leave it there. And you can step on the gas from there and go faster if you want. It's kind of a great idea. Really well engineered. That was pretty neat. So you could use that, uh, like if you wanted to have, like on my other cars, I don't have, I have chokes, right? I have the big engines in them. So I have a choke, but I don't have a fast idle. And it's always a pain in the morning when I go to start it. So I could put this whole setup down there. You could just use a stock choke cable from a bus, from an early bus or a bug. They're, I think they're the same. And shorten the cable right and just stick it in the same place you put your reserve switch on the floor so normally i think it's one of these two i can't remember this one or that one it's a reserve switch area or the choke choke on one reserve switch on the other and you could just use that same thing drill a hole in there put that stock knob on there you wouldn't even notice it was not original and then run that to that cable just use that same cable from that. Use that as your lawnmower cable like they did here. And then run it to that same setup they have there. And you wouldn't even need to cut your dash or anything. It'd just be look all original. That's what I'm doing on my camper because the camper I have a choke cable on it already. And I don't even use it because it doesn't have a choke. It's got a carb on it. But I'll just take that cable and clean it up and lube it. Run it around and hook it to the throttle well, that's the plan pretty neat anyway that's on the so 10 they have it on a few other special models that have hydraulic powered stuff on them there's a few special models if you really look up so models there's a only a few of them i mean there was the so 42 which is a camper everybody knows that westphalia partnership with volkswagen this was a ruthman partnership with volkswagen so it's the same type of thing and it's an SO model and then they had the fire truck with the ladder that's hydraulic powered I believe too so that's probably got the same fast idle thing on it too anyway that's cool talk to you guys a little bit later all right check this out man this is cool let's hook up don't ever want to hook up one of these things backwards pretty much it's over at that point Check this out. I guess it's got 12 volts right now. I'm not going to hold it on there very long. It doesn't. If they're bad, a lot of times they'll move around when you try and ground it. So I'm used to using the test. The reason I'm using the test light is because it just puts a little more resistance on it so it's not so hard on the gauge. Gauge works. This old bucket truck's original gauge. Six volt gauge. I got a Hook up one of these things here to it. I tried just doing it here on the bench, and I don't know. Either this volt battery's not fully charged, or this isn't working. I usually have no problem with these. I get these all the time on eBay. You're looking for one of those. Take down that number. But, yeah, the old gauge works. So get that cleaned up, put on. Little by little, I'm getting this thing together. All right, so this is the horn that came off of it. Uh, it's not original, is it? I got this one from a swap meet. This one's already working. So I put some free on here. On here. Let's see if it takes it off. Yep. No problem. It's a free all there. Good stuff, man. Seems to take off about everything. I put on PB Blast and it doesn't do anything. I use this stuff, it takes it right off. Very cool stuff.
worth the money. Don't even have any people blast anymore. I'm not buying that stuff. Wasted dollars to me for using this. Cool. Or use that bracket. All right, got that all hooked up. All right, you guys want to do the honors? I don't know. I'll let you do it. Okay, got a horn. I got to do is shorten this up a little. And then I got the horn button coming. Still got to connect up the last part of this. I got the gauge hooked up, but of course it doesn't read anything. I don't have much gas in here. So we got to fill it up and see. And it's probably going to fill it all the way up full and it won't register but to like three quarters of a tank or whatever. That's fine. Got these things on here. Just put the rubber wash. I took rubber washers and cut them back and put those on. And those are stainless steel. Ordered some mirror for these. All I do is I get the Plex mirror. Plexiglass mirror. And I'll put it on here. And then I'll just trace around it and then use a cutoff wheel and a grinder. Shape it. You don't have to go to a glass guy. Works the same. Also got some cool new rigs for this thing. These things go on like this. If you always wondered how they do that carpet binding. Uh, these things go on like this. Those little, those little two holes right there. And you have these little thumb screws here. Goes on those two little holes. And you adjust it. Get it right up next to the pressure foot right there. Get you guys up closer here. Put it right up the pressure foot against there. And then put your carpet in there. You put your ribbon in here. And it just sews it perfectly right on the edge. All you got to do is just keep the carpet up against that edge and just push it. It's cool. So I'll be doing some matting. I'm going to do one for the SO23. Yeah, I got some. Just got some this carpet you know it's kind of modern but it'll be nice on your feet i'm gonna have that like i'm gonna stitch all the way around it with this here let's see i got this like that goes around the edge gives it a little accent and then those things that machine that rig will just sew that on there really nice still got to be a little bit careful and the stitching, who knows? I don't know how that's going to come out. But that machine isn't the greatest, but it'll probably do okay. So, kind of neat. I'll do all that. I'll cut this out, make a piece, and then do that. I'll do that later. I have another video for that, but stuff's coming up. Also got some more of this vinyl. I'm going to try to make a seat cover for this, too. This is a generic TMI. It's, I don't know, it says 49 to, or 51 or whatever to 79 bus <laughs> with this kind of seat i don't know it's kind of generic they don't fit the greatest and i thought you know what it looks all right but i thought it'd be cool to have the same thing that's in the other van i think it's just that vinyl looks better but well, just this color yeah it's not really something's not digging it so I don't know. I'll try it. See if I can do it. If I can, I'll guys put this one back on. Of course, these ones don't look half bad. I don't know if I had that in this video or the other one. Been a week or so making video stuff, parts, little pieces and stuff. As I'm doing stuff, I just have so many little things to do. And I found my bolts finally for this, but I got the wrong size washers. I ordered some more washers for them. I can't find the washers. I don't know. If I did buy them or didn't buy them, but the ones I got are too small, so I'll try and get some fender washers for that. See how that works on there. Anyway, those are coming. Gonna get that on. Gonna get on this thing here in a little bit. Then I'll finish polishing it all up and all that. Gotta finish polishing, touch up some paint flaws, and then that thing's just about done, isn't it? Once I get the latch done, I gotta get the engine running a little better too. It's not running quite right, but it's drivable the way it is. It's drivable for sure. Starts right up. 
First time in a couple days. Let's see. Cold start. Oh, that's right. I got the wrong battery in here. <laughs> I took the battery out. Yeah, I don't even turn it over. Oh, almost. Yeah, I took the battery out of it. I uh, put it in the other car because the other one was dead. So I'm going out of my favorite place, Walmart. I hate Walmart, but batteries are really cheap there when you get the poverty special for 50 something bucks. So I'll probably go get one of those and get that part fixed. I got the wipers hooked up. I just have to last run the wiper wire over and I got the knob missing right now. I got one coming for that. And then this is well, the dome lights wired up. I just got to put bulbs in it. So we'll see if that works. So anyway, that's about it for this right now. I'm going to give you guys something to watch here and then uh, we'll do some more video. Definitely going to do a lot more to this. I still got to put these things on. I got those too. That's right. I got those things. I keep on remembering that I got these are pretty roached. I think I got some more of these somewhere. Better ones. Or I'll just buy new ones. I don't know. Whatever. And uh, get these on there so the, that's done. Little things to do. And then I usually use a little dot of silicone. Once I get this in, I'll put a little dot of silicone up in the corner up there. They used to have like, in this year, they had like a little plastic thing that just stuck in the, you know, that's what they used to hold it. And then the later models, they had that little, I don't know, it looks like a little keeper of some kind. And the early ones just had just, it was just a little plastic block and it was just stuck up in there. That's all they had to keep the window from sliding forward, right? Anyway, I'll talk to you next one. Please like, share, and subscribe. Uh, see your comments going. I'll talk to you in the next one.